Hey guys, uh, I'm Pastor Eddie Sinkevich from Tribulation Sanctuary Ministries, and this is going to be my first sermon. Um, it's about how God created the signs, at, which are the sun, the moon, and the stars, and the constellations in, in space, and how he uses them to communicate with us, and how that communication tells us, and what it tells us. So, the question is, how is God supposed to communicate with us? to us as a whole, if he doesn't walk among us anymore. In Genesis 1, 14 through 17, it says, Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 14 to 17. Genesis 1, 14 to 17. here. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 to 17. Verse 14 goes, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens, to give that light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights. The greater light is to, to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. The firmament is what we today call outer space. So, when God, in verse 14, when God said, Let there be light it's in the firmament of heaven, that means the stars, the constellations, and the firmament. The firmament meaning space. To, to divide day from night, that would be the moon and the sun, and let them be for signs and seasons. Now, signs, it's obviously known as a sign to show someone or to show someone something or to tell someone something, right? And seasons. Seasons being fall, winter, uh, spring, and summer. And for days and years. Lunar calendar system, based on the moon, if I'm not mistaken, for the Hebrew people, they they uh, use the lunar calendar. Uh, verse 15, and let them be lights for the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. Going back to the stars in space, and constellations, and it was so. Then verse 16, God made two great lights. The greater light was to rule the day, that being the sun, and the lesser light to rule the night, He be that being the moon. The moon. He made the stars also, the constellations in the stars, that'd be them. Hi, Bree. Peep's sleeping right now. Verse 17, God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. Firmament, again, being space, outer space. So, in Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 28, Luke 21, 25 to 28, Luke 21, 25 to 28. Okay. So in Luke 25, chapter 25, 21 to 28, Jesus says, And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And on the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea in the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these th things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads, because redemption draws near. Now, in verse 25, Jesus says, And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. Bree, I will bring up Peep after the sermon. Going back to the signs, of the, of the moon and the sun and the stars, God made those things to show us when His plan, His plan comes together. 
when Jesus comes back the second time, which would be after the rapture, which is before the tribulation, the great tribulation that is, with seven year tribulation, and there'd be a second coming. Also in verse 25 when it says, And on the earth distress of the nations with perplexity and the sea and waves roaring. So, let's dissect that. On the earth distress of nations. Right now the nations of the world, you know, United States of America, Libya, all, every nations all of all continents, Australia, Middle East, Europe, everywhere. They're in distress of what to do because of all the things that are happening right now in the world. And they don't, they don't know what to do. They're in a state of confusion, you know? And with perplexity, which is also another word for confusion. They don't know what the, he what the heck they're doing. They, it's just it's not, it's not working out too well. This, the sea and the waves roaring. Um, the sea meaning, obviously, the ocean. The waves roaring. There have been numerous amount of floods and tsunamis, if I'm not mistaken, throughout the whole world. And it, it's, it's just unprecedented, unprecedented total catastrophe with weather. Also, another fun fact, God controls the weather. Verse 26, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. Um, men's hearts failing them from fear. In fear of what not of knowing what not to do in a perplexed situation, they worry. Worry causes stress, and stress kills. Um, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, the the war, the rumors of wars, and all the bad things happening, that causes worry. And again, worry causes stress, and stress kills. And the Bible tells us, if I'm not mistaken, Jesus does tell us, I don't, I don't remember where at the time in the Bible it says, He says, worry not and fear not. So, I understand worrying, not, not worrying and not stressing is kind of somewhat impossible. And the Bible does say, with God all things are possible, but we're not perfect. It's okay for us to stress, but not too much. It's okay for us to worry because we're human, we're not made perfect, we... we it's in our it's it's in our genetic makeup to to worry and to stress and to try to figure things out when we can't really figure things out because we don't know what things are going to come out to verse 26 for the powers of the heavens will be shaken the powers of the heavens being shaken that's god saying that's it enough's enough the world has sinned against me and is not repenting. The human, the human race is evil and corrupted and vile. My wrath is about to come, so get ready. Verse 27, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That, if I am not mistaken, that pertains to the rapture. And the rapture is mentioned... Let me go to First Thessalonians. All right, First Thessalonians, chapter four. I want to say. First Thessalonians, chapter four. I was right. Cool. First uh, Thessalonians, chapter four, verses fourteen to eighteen. This is the rapture, and the rapture is. I'll, I'll explain right here. Verse fourteen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Those who sleep in Jesus are dead in Christ, who are buried. For this, verse 15, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remaining, remain until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who are asleep. That means those who are still alive, not dead, for the faith in Christ, and who have pretty much survived a bit more before tribulation and after tribulations, uh, for Jesus says in Matthew 24, you sh they shall put you, they shall persecute you, kill you, and go, and you will ha go through tribulations for my name's sake. But there will time, there will become a, there will, there, will, there will come a time where there ha there will be great tribulation, which has not been, nor shall no, nor ever shall be. 
that great tribulation is this is the great tribulation where after that's after the rapture uh, verse 16 for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first that's that's the beginning of the rapture all those who died with Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior their bodies will be taken up or they, their spirits will be taken up and their bodies will rise from the graves and go up to heaven where they will receive their new glorified bodies for mortal a mortal must put on immortality and incorruptible incorruptible must put on incorruptibility it's verse 17 then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord verse 18 therefore come from one another of these words the rapture is going to be happening very very soon guys it's if you don't believe it it's going to happen whether you believe it or not it's 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 happening if you choose to believe it or not it's whether you do or not it's it's going to happen and I, I, my heart goes out to those who don't believe it who are kind of ignorant towards the bible and towards Jesus to Christ and God cuz they're going to be left behind and it's not going to be great and whoever's left behind will suffer horrendous things like no human has ever suffered in the past before it's going to be horrible but um back to Luke 21 verses 25 to 28 that's what 27 verse 27 is referencing they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory 28 now when these things begin to happen look up and lift your heads because redemption draws near when these things Things, quote unquote, begin to happen. Uh, I'll go. Actually, I'll go to twenty one verse eleven. Actually, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I'll go to. Verse seven. I'll read all the way till twenty four. So, chapter twenty one, Luke twenty one, verse seven. The disciples asked him, saying, "Teacher." But when will these things be, and what will be, what what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? Verse eight, and Jesus said, "Take heed that no that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am He. The time is drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first. But the end will not come immediately." Verse ten. Then he said to them, "Nation will rise against nation." And kingdom against kingdom. Um, it is also said in the Bible that the Middle East and specifically Jerusalem will be the center of attention in the latter days, which we are in now. Jerusalem, Israel, is pretty much the big, the big to get the big, um, the big to know. You gotta everything is going to be revolving on Israel right now with. Uh, Russia, Libya, Turkey, and Iran going against them. That ties in into the uh, the prophecy from Daniel, if I'm not mistaken, in Ezekiel. The war of Gog and Magog, which is to happen right before the rapture and before the tribulation. Um, verse 11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, there will be great fear, there, and there will be great fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Um, earthquakes. There's been a lot of earthquakes, a lot, and hit and more powerful now, so more than ever in history. Unprecedented, unprecedented weather. Like for example, last year, last summer actually, um, it started hailing, like literally hail, the size of this right here. A little bit smaller, but it still, it was hailing in the middle of summer in Scranton, Wilkesbury, PA. Now, I'm no weather genius, but that, that's just not normal, you know? There's some, like, for example, there's some, this is just an example. So, famines and pestilences, sicknesses and pestilences, God also uses, um, God uses weather as a form of pestilence as well as sickness and disease. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Fearful sights. Um, that can be described as 
martyrdom, people being killed for their faith in Christ, persecution, Christian persecution, um, and great signs from heaven. That's Great signs of heaven is what we're dissecting in this sermon right now. Verse 12, But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, for de- or persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for thine, my name's sake. Verse 13, But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. An occasion for testimony is basically giving your testimony, your truth, nothing but the whole truth for God, and how God and Jesus helped you without you, throughout your life and has, has been guiding you throughout your life. That's your testimony. My testimony is three years long, and that will be another video. Um, verse 14, Therefore settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contra- contradict or resist. Verse 16, you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Being put to death for the for holding the faith of Jesus Christ is called being a, is be is a, is called a martyr. Will you die for your faith in Christ, and He will reward you reward you greatly beyond your imagination than you possibly imagine. And I feel that's going to be happening soon, very soon here in the United States of America. <laughs> Verse 17, and you will be hated for by all for my name's sake, but not a hair on your head, hair on, or verse 18, but not a hair of your head shall be lost. By your patience possess your souls. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, remember you know, the whole pinpoint focus on Jerusalem being surrounded by all of the uh, Islamic armies, um, Iran, Libya, Turkey. I'm sorry, I said I ran it twice. I ran Libya, Turkey, and Russia. No, then know that des- its desolation is near. That's ref- that's referencing the desolation of Damascus within an hour. That will commence the war of Gog and Magog. And with that reference there, the uh, the, the destruction of, of Damascus and under and within the hour of that day in the Bible, in Ezekiel, if I'm not mistaken, which mentions the Gog and Magog war prophecy. That right there is reference to that. Then you know that desolation is near. That's talking about the desolation of Damascus, which kicks off the war of Gog and Magog, like, officially, like, boom, it's happening. It's go- it's going. Like, it's happening. It's, it's, there's no going back from that. And within that uh, desolation of Damascus, um, a little bit after that, another attack will happen, and God himself will defend Israel himself, showing that he is their God, and he is the Lion of Judah. And he, will, he, will, he, will, he will stop the unprecedented attack on Israel, and showing Israel and all of the world, and all of the earth, that he is God. God the Father. He is the one and true God. Verse 21, Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her department, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. 23, But woe to those who are pregnant in those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Now, that, with that being said, verse 23, But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Um, uh, who are pregnant and nursing babies in, in the, today's world and before the rapture, I have one thing to say to you. Please do not take this to heart, but it's the truth. If you're not covered in the blood of Jesus Christ and you do not ask the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior and you're not saved... When the rapture happens, those babies are gone. We're go- they're going to heaven with us, with the Christians who are in the rapture. And those who are about to give birth around that time, your, bo- your womb will be barren. There will be no baby there. It will be gone. And those who, are, who have infants and toddlers, they will be gone too. They will be up in heaven with the rapture. Because a baby is a gift from the Lord and is innocent. 
by his innocence, it is innocent, and it will be taken up to the rapture because of its innocence. As, as mentioned in um, Luke 18, verse 16, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Luke 18, verse 16, Jesus said to, call the, to him, Jesus said to him in them, Let the little children come unto me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. So, there's that reference. So, just, you know, another thing. For those who are pregnant right now, who are about to give birth, and who are about to, who are nursing babies, and will have, you know, little infants, please, I, I seriously, if you don't, if you do not want to be left behind here on earth, and your baby not being with you no more, I sir, I surely, surely, assuredly, assuredly suggest to you to ask Jesus to be Lord and Savior and repent of your sins. And you will go with your child up to heaven when the rapture takes place. I guarantee you, you will be with your child when the rapture takes place. You will not be left behind. Your child will not be taken away from you. You will not be left behind and left without child. You will be taken up with their ch with your child up to heaven so that we will not have to suffer the great tribulation. With that being said, I move onward. Verse 24, chapter 21, Luke. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Alright, so Gentiles are anyone who isn't Jewish. Whether you be Asian, African American, Polish, you're Gentile. If you're not Jewish, you're Gentile. That's what that is. And when it says, And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. The time of the Gentile is the period of, of uh, grace, we, that it's called grace by God through Jesus Christ, that whoever believeth on him shall have, shall live and not die and go to heaven in the rapture. That time period is what we're in, and it's about, eh, I want to say, extremely close from ending to where that period, that um, that grace period is no longer, you got actually got to do work. For faith is the essence of things hoped for and not seen. None of us today saw Jesus being crucified, but we have faith. We believe it. We didn't see it. For the saying, for people in the world say, seeing is believing, but believing, in, I forget, how did it go? Seeing is believing, but believing isn't seeing. That's actually wrong. That is really, really wrong. And what it's supposed to go is as follows. Believing is seeing. The more you believe, the more you see, and the more you see, the more, the more you believe. That's how that goes. So, the times of the Gentiles are being fulfilled with Bible prophecy and end time prophecy. There are multiple non-Jewish people in Jerusalem and, and uh, Israel. You know, how Trump you moved the U.S. Embassy from v v uh, Tel Aviv to Israel, Jerusalem, um, noticing, recognizing that Jerusalem is the nation and capital of Israel. And that has that's that has prophetic meaning to it too. That's a whole different story, kinda ish in its own. Um, so there's that. Also, Luke twenty one, eleven, which I did read, and there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be great fearful sights and the great signs of heaven. So. The signs of heaven is constellations. You know, Virgo, uh, Aquarius, um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Basically the constellations of the signs. You know, the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, Orion's Belt, that kind of thing. So, if we look back in Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 2, we see this. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Ten verse 2. Thus says the Lord, and Jeremiah in the Old Testament is an Old Testament prophet who prophesied about the days we're living in right now. The end times, the latter days. So chapter 10, verse 2 of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, do not learn the ways of the Gentiles, do not be dismayed or confused at the signs of heaven, 
for the Gentiles are dis are confused or dismayed at them. That right there, I can dissect you can dissect it as this. The Lord was speaking to Jeremiah, telling um, Judah and all the land of what to do. And to the Gentiles, the uh, the non Jewish people, the Gentiles, you know, African, American, Polish, what have you, they get confused about the signs of the heaven. They dismiss it, like, oh, it's no it's nothing to worry about. When it actually it is it is something to pay attention to because that's how God's telling us that Jesus is coming back. We're going to go home soon. Uh, there's going to be great pestilences. There's going to be great weather just catastrophes. It's all in the signs. And do not be, do not put away the signs. Do not like forget about them or say that there's nothing happen. There's like there's nothing to them when there actually is. Also. You know, this may being mean discouraged or doubting. Don't doubt the signs of heaven. Do not doubt the Lord, for He knows all. He sees all. He does all. Uh, which brings me to Revelation twelve verse one. And seriously, if you, I'll get there. I'll tell you when I get there. Revelation chapter twelve verse one. Revelation being the last book of the Bible, the final book of the Bible, which is full of end time Bible prophecy which is being fulfilled to this day and will forever con continue to be fulfilled until Jesus, until all have bowed down to Jesus and proclaim him as Lord and, as Lord and King Lord of Lords and King of Kings, praise God okay Revelation 12 verses 1 now seriously hang, like, listen to me on this part this happened in the constellations. What I'm about to read to you, it happened. It happened. I don't care if you don't believe in the Bible. This is this is fulfillment of prophecy. You can't deny that it didn't happen because it did happen. It did happen in this in the constellation of the stars. And I'll dissect and go over what it all actually, you know, represented. So chapter two or chapter twelve, verse one of Revelation. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A sign of the stars in heaven, heaven, which would be not the third heaven, but the second heaven, which would be the firmament, the outer space. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Verse 2. Then be with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Now, the woman clothed with the sun is the constellation of Virgo. The sun was over her head. And the moon was under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars, which consisted of, if I'm not mistaken, um, another uh, star formation. If I'm not mistaken, it is Orion, the belt of Orion. I don't recall at the time, but it did happen. I researched this. I did a lot of research on this, and if if um. I'm sorry, I'm, I lost train of thought. I apologize. Um, the twelve stars represent a crown. You know, a garland also, is also named for a crown. So, there was a crown-shaped star constellation with star uh, gathering group that made it look like a crown. <laughs> And verse two, then be with child. She gave, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Oh yeah, I remember what I was gonna say. So, if you have the one Google Earth, Google uh, Planets program on the computer, that will let you go back and forth from past to future uh, times in the sky and the in the stars. It it will it shows you that this actually happened in the, in the constellation of Virgo. This event happened. On September twenty third, twenty seventeen, and if you if you don't believe me, research this for yourself. And if you have the program, get it. I would highly advise it because God does talk to us through the signs like these, the constellations. But seriously, it's it's something you I I recommend that you should check out because 
there, there's, there's no way that this didn't happen when it did. So, verse 2, then be with child. The child represented in that sign was the planet Jupiter. The planet Jupiter literally went inside the womb, the stomach area of the constellation Virgo, and revolved around it nine months straight like a woman would do if she were pregnant. It revolved, the, the Jupiter revolved in the constellation, womb of the constellation of Virgo for nine months, as a pregnant woman would. Now, I don't know how else to explain it, but that, that's, that's just, that's incredible right there. It, it's completely incredible. And then after those nine months exactly, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Jupiter left the womb as a newborn child would leave the womb. So, <laughs> that's just, you know, amazing. And then I go to, go to Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. Uh, chapter 15, verse 1, Revelation. Then I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them the wrath of God is complete. Now, this I just found out and discovered about a couple weeks ago by... Uh, Pastor Robert B Breaker, he's on YouTube, he is brilliant, check out his stuff, he is absolutely brilliant, completely, completely Bible smart, um, and this sign happens to be the constellation of Pallades. Now, the Pallades constellation is also known as the seven sis the stars of the, uh, the constellation of the seven sisters. Hmm, that seems to be ironic. Seven sisters compared to seven angels, right? And the shape of the Pallades constellation right now looks like a cup that's being poured, you know, with stuff coming out. Okay, no. Yes, this is where Orion comes in. The belt of Orion, Orion's belt is the stuff that's pouring out. It seems to be pouring out the cup, which of uh, the constellation Pallades was, which looks like a cup being poured. So, right now, it is. It's being poured from what it, from what it looked like. Um. And that cup is the wrath of God. And the wrath of God will is the worst part of it. Will be part of the great tribulation. Um. It it will, it will not be good for those who are not saved. I, I can't stress this enough, guys. Please, I highly, highly suggest that. You get to know Lord Jesus, and it's see, another thing about this. It's not about religion, okay? Because religion is man-made, and the thing about religion is repetition of saying prayers. You know, repetition of saying the same prayer over and over and over. That's kind of not cool. And the thing about religion is, religion is man-made, but salvation was made was Christ, was God made through Christ Jesus. And Christianity is not about religion. It's about having a personal and intimate relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Like, it, you, it, it's, you, get, you gotta get to know them for yourself. And everyone is different, and everyone's path is different. I understand that. It's just people don't understand the difference between religion and Christianity. Christianity is not a religion. It's actually a belief in faith. And remember how I said faith is the essence of things hoped for that are unseen? We have faith that Jesus died. We have faith that Jesus rose again, was resurrected from the dead on the third day. That's faith. And that's belief. Everything else is religion. God did not make religion. God made salvation through Christ Jesus. So, after Revelation 15.1, I'm going to go to we're going to go to Amos, chapter 5, verse 8. And, chapter 5, verse 8, Amos. And I, I find this very, <laughs> not coincidental, because with God there is no coincidence, but I find this um, very ironic. Another thing with God, when you get to know him, he has one heck of a sense of humor. He, <laughs> he has a really amazing sense of humor. He's funny. Amos chapter 5, verse 8. 
chapter 5, verse 8. And it's, very, it's a very short book in the Bible. That's why I sometimes have difficulty finding it. Because it's like three or four chapters, if I'm not mistaken. Stroll, there we go, Amos. So, uh, Amos, chapter 5, verse 8. It says, He made the Pallades, right, and Orion. He turns the shadow of death into morning and makes the day dark as night. He calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Now, remember how I was saying that it's ironic that the place of constellation was in Revelation? That, see, scripture matches the scripture. This is Old Testament, Amos. And what I read you from Revelation, that's New Testament. Scripture always goes to Scripture. And in the constellation of Palladius and how it looks right now, it looks like something's being poured out. It's in the shape of a cup that something's being poured out. And what is being poured out seems to look like the constellation, constellation belt of Orion. And it just, it, just, it fits. It, it fits. Um... He turns the shadow of death into mourning, meaning mourning as in morning day, not mourning as in uh, crying. He calls to the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth, the floods, the great pestilences and famines, floods, weather catastrophes, and this liquid coming out of the cup of the wrath of God. That, that right there, the waters of the sea and pours them out like the face of the earth, that I believe is referencing to the cup of the wrath of God is being the wrath of God is being poured out with the constellation of Pallades and using Orion as well. The Lord is His name, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Praise God. So, I'm now we're now going to go to Job chapter one verse nine. Job chapter one verse nine. Uh, is that four fifty two? Is that five forty two? Or is my dyslexia acting up? Five fifty-two. Five forty-two. Uh, Job one, chapter one, verse nineteen. And it says, verse nineteen. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people as, and they are dead. Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. Job chapter 1, verse 9, not 19. I apologize, guys. Alright, so... Huh. I may have made a typo. Okay. Or, uh, what time is it now? I shouldn't be too, too long here. So around maybe 8 o'clock. Because I still got the scallops to frosting in the sink. Okay. Why did I put Job 1-9 when... Hold on, let me, let me backtrack here, guys. One sec. Oh, Job 9-9. Nine, nine. I'm sorry, guys. I can't read my own handwriting. Okay, so... Chap Job chapter 9, verse 9. Okay. He made the bear, Orion, in the Pallades, in the chambers of the south, meaning God. He made the bear, Orion, in the Pallades. I don't recall what the other translations say about what the bear is. I forget what constellation the, the bear is called at the time being I will um, I'll look up after this uh, this sermon and give the, def the definition of it 
for what the bear is. But, like, the thing is, like, that, just the connectivity, you know? Like, here's a dot, here's a dot, here's a dot, and they just connect. You get, like, scripture matches scripture. And it's, it's simply amazing in how it does. And then, now we're going to go to Psalm 19, verse 4. Psalm 19, verse 4. Psalm 19, verse 4. And it says, Their line has gone out through the, all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Okay. So the line has gone out through all the earth. The line being... <laughs> My big Ross, my testimony, it's a whole separate video. I'll make a separate video for my testimony. It, it's 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 too long for uh, for this sermon, so I'll make a separate I'll make a separate live to get my testimony at another date. But I will do that. I will do that because it's 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 incredible, and it will be nothing but the truth. Absolute nothing but the truth. So help me God. God's my witness. So, the line has gone up through all the earth. To me, I believe, it's what, is, what, this, what, this, what I think this is, the line being Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is our only lifeline to salvation in heaven. He is that lifeline. In the words to the end of the world, Jesus, which, which is speaking of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the words that are the gospel... In them, he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Tabernacle meaning, if I'm not mistaken, an agreement, also like a government, covenant, but like a gathering. So he's like, God's saying this, he's like, hear the words of the gospel, and it will be preached throughout all the earth. Join the tabernacle so that you may be saved through Christ. That's what it seems to be to me. I may be wrong, you know, I'm not perfect. But that's what it seems to be saying to me. From what, in my, in my view, that's what it seems to be saying. Okay, so, signs and wonders is a big way God is speaking to us as a whole, as a, as a, uh, as a human race itself. And uses the stars and constellations. In Psalm 19, 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Now, remember how I said in the beginning of the, of the sermon, the firmament is what we call today outer space. And the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. The heavens are also known as outer space, but beyond outer space. Like, like two thousand million light years away. It's in, it's incredible. <laughs> Outer space is God's creation to use as science to get to get our attention. I, we, now we're going to go to Isaiah forty, chapter forty, verse twenty six. Isaiah forty, verse twenty six. And that is Old Testament, right? I believe it is. Isaiah 62. Yeah, it's Old Testament. Ah! Hello. 682, 68. There we go. And actually... Thank you, Lord. You turned the page right I need to go to. Awesome. Thank you. Alright, so chapter 40, verse 26. I'm sorry. Chapter 40, Isaiah, verse 26. Alright. Lift up your eyes on high, and see who has created these things, who brings out their host by number. He calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and the strength of his power. Not one is missing. Now that right there is another reference to uh, when Jesus says, look up for your redemption draws near, and the time is ready. As he's telling us to look up and look for Jesus, because Jesus is going to be coming very, very, very soon. And look up, and watch and therefore pray, that you 
go in the rapture, for he said he will, for those who do not believe he shall be to he shall be to those as a thief in the night. Meaning, we're gone. We're out of here. We're, 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 we're in heaven. We're, we're gone. We're done. Until Armageddon. Which will be after the seven year tribulation. But, that's, that's another, you know, another thing. Scripture matches scripture. And see who has created these things. God has, God created everything that has ever existed. Way back in Genesis 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, I do get sometimes, oh, oh, Big Bang Theory, da 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 da, uh, you know, the Big Bang happened, all these gases, and just bang, out of nowhere. And it happened at, like, it had to, it had to been those, so, the, a little bit more percent off or more, it wouldn't have happened. A little percent, percent less, it wouldn't have happened. It was just right. So, how to explain that, as most scientists would say. Oh, you know, the gases, you know, matter and all this. Guys, if anything, the Big Bang proves God's existence. And I'll explain it like this. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Actually, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, I'm sorry. Actually, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I'll go to verse 3. In the earth, uh, I'm sorry, verse 1 to 3, Genesis. Actually, verse 4. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Before God, there was nothing. And after God, God has always been God. He is omniscient, omnipotent. There was nothing before God. God has just existed because he's God. So, in explaining the Big Bang Theory, God said, said let there be light, and bang, there was light. So, with that being said, I want to see if I uh, missed any other things here with this sermon. Um... Okay, so actually, I did miss a couple things in the Old Testament um, and Revelation. So we'll go to you know what? Yeah, let's go to let's go to uh, the Old Testament. I want to say it's in Exodus. Let me see. Exodus chapter it by the two pages. Right. Actually, you know what? I can't find the the one reference I was gonna make in uh, Exodus, but it was it went along the terms of the ten plagues of Egypt, um, how God used Moses to turn the Nile River into blood. That's happening now again in Israel over the Middle East. Waters are turning to blood, and people are saying, "Oh, it's iron oxide," but it's it's not iron oxide. It really isn't. It's God. It's God. And then the reference of Darkness three days long. There will be there will be no light for for three days long because Pharaoh wouldn't let Moses and the Hebrew people out of Egypt, and God was 
the same that plays out after after um, Ramses or Pharaoh. So it's just it's I just find it honestly <clears throat> I find it I, I'm completely baffled and appalled if I'm using that word correctly that when those who don't believe are shown proof and explanation for that proof and they just simply just don't see it I don't know how they don't see it and no I'm not I'm not bashing you I'm just saying like it's right there guys it's, it's, it's right there um but in Revelation I want to say chapter 16 let's see Revelation 6 Revelation chapter Ah I think this is right here. Ah, so Revelation this is what the blood moves everything. Like these the blood moves that we've been having, they tied a prophecy too. Bible prophecy that this it's all connected, okay? Um, so Revelation chapter 8, verse 12, this is a reference to the blood moons, and another reference to this darkness three days long, back to the Old Testament for Moses. Uh, verse 12, Then the fourth angel sounded, this is the sounding of the seventh trumpets, the seventh trumpet being the last trumpet, because seven is number completion, which is also God's number for completion because he rested the seventh day after creating the earth and everything. He rested the seventh day, sanctified it, and marked it as holy. That is actually called the Sabbath, and it is Saturday, not Sunday. Let's get that clear. It's Saturday, not Sunday. Then the fourth angel sounded, verse 12, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, went, a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. Sound familiar? And a third of the day did not shine, likewise the night. So there was no light for three days. Darkness three days long. Scripture, connecting with scripture like that. Um, but, let's see. Time's running about short, so i leave you guys with this. If you ever find yourself asking yourself whether or not, will I go to heaven, what, like, what will happen when you die? If you think, if you don't know, and want to go to heaven, or if you think you're going to hell, and you want to go to heaven, or if you are not sure if you're on your way to heaven, in order to get to heaven, 100%, no, gar no, no catches, no 100%, ask Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Repent of your sins and believe wholeheartedly. Confess with the mouth that He is the Son of the living God. He raised from the dead on the third day, and He is Lord. Cast upon all Him your sin and ask for forgiveness. Believe that in your heart, mind, body, and being that He is the Son of God. He rose the third day, and that what He did for, and He died for all sin past, present, and future sin. All sin. Covered all sin. And ask Him to become be your Lord and Savior and ask to get to know Him. And if you were if you're to say that, you have said your repentance prayer, you are now saved. You will, you will now be part of the rapture. You will be coming home with us before the great tribulation, before tribulations. For Jesus says in John, 13, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man shall come unto the Father except through me. God bless you all. I'll have another sermon up. I'll work on another sermon. Um, please leave some comments on the, uh, in, the, in the comment section below on what topic I should cover, what you guys would like to know, and I can do a sermon on that. Uh, good night, guys. I love you all. God bless.